thank you everyone. Um, thank you for attending tonight's school committee meeting of November 6th, 2013. Could you please join me in saluting the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we'll call this meeting to order. The first item on our agenda is hearing of visitors. I've been informed that we do not have anyone signed in, so we will move to the second item, which is what we call the consent agenda. It is basically routine business that the school committee ratifies through a motion and a vote. And at this time, uh, we allow any school committee member who may want to exclude anything for discussion to do so at this time. Is there anyone that would like to take an item out of the consent agenda for further discussion? Seeing none. Donation from cost. Can make a motion to approve the consent agenda? Okay. With one exclusion, a donation from Costco. Um, okay, so items A, B, C. Should I amend my motion? Please, Mrs. Joyce. I'll amend my motion to exclude item E. Thank you, Mrs. Joyce. All in favor? Okay. Acceptance of donation from Costco. Madam Superintendent. You know, once again, uh, on behalf of the Brockton Public Schools, uh, I want to thank uh, Matt Alfstein, who, uh, with the Costco uh, folks, were able to put together uh, a number of backpacks. And this is important to the Brockton Public Schools because all children want to start the school year with a new backpack, with all of the supplies and materials that they need to start the year new and to have, uh, like every child, you know, something, something new, something exciting to begin their school year. So I want to thank them of the numbers and numbers of children that were able to benefit from, from having a new backpack. Wonderful. Thank you. Very generous as usual for many of the local businesses around the area. Um, would someone please make a motion to accept? Mr. Joyce? Thank you, Mr. Joyce. Second? Mr. Sullivan? All in favor? thank my earnest colleagues, the members of this most august body, and I do use that term quite loosely, uh, for the privilege and honor presenting this, the winners of this contest of prizes. I would especially like to thank Professor Shapiro, Chair of the Science Department at BHS, Mr. Perkins, Associate Principal, and especially BHA's Principal, Ms. Sharon Walder, a woman of keen intellect and poise, garnered from her education. Remember that, ladies and gentlemen. The genesis for this contest, Science and Education, comes via some line out of ribbon between a dear friend of mine, Dr. David Levitt, and me. After the first game of the series, I left a voicemail uh, with Dr. Levitt, in which I sang, na 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 na, na 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 na. Hey, well, I sang it much better then. Hey, 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 goodbye. We converse in a peculiar vernacular, and, uh, he called me back and said, hey, babe, what's up with all the sodium you're tossing at me? And luckily I had enough coffee and I caught on right away. NA is the, uh, the symbol for, from the periodic table for sodium. So I said to him, I said, hey, babe, I just sang you the sodium song. So he says, well, I'm going to get a chance to sing it right back at you next game, which he did. So after a few laughs, we, I said to him, I said, that would be a great, uh, a great contest for the kids at the high school. And he agreed. And I said, you can help me with that. And uh, at that point, David said that uh, the sodium question will be, will be quite easy for the kids. But he said, you should pose it somehow to bring in the sister elements, which is K, potassium. 
Mr. Walder, Ms. Walder and Mr. Perkins liked the idea and handed the test to Mr. Shapiro to form the questions, which he did quite, uh, quite well, I think. And to my surprise and joy, after less than two days that the contest ran because of the uh, speed with which we dispensed with the Cardinals, we had 67 correct contestants out of 125. The committee was then faced with a conundrum. We purchased out of pocket one sign per joy of that and faced with buying another 66. Well, that wasn't in the game plan. So I then contacted a friend of mine, a friend of VHS as well, Ms. Libby Siskins, who was born here in Brockton and owns a lovely eclectic boutique store in the Brighton section of Boston where I grew up. And she recommended licensed earrings, necklaces, and hats. And she sold the items to the committee for nearly cost, the most generous gesture. Uh, Dr. Levitt was born and raised in St. Louis. He has, a, uh, he has a master's and a PhD from Boston University. That's how I met him when he was living in Brighton in chemical engineering. So he's, he's a learned man. His dad actually was the, uh, was the team doctor for the Cards in the late 70s and 80s and 90s. So he actually has a, uh, a World Series ring. You wouldn't want to wear it every day, your finger would fall off. In any event, um, without further ado, I'd like to bring forward the lucky gentleman who, out of the 67, his name was drawn to get the bat. Because folks, remember that, hard work is important, but some, there is some luck in life. So, Nicholas Lopez, please come forward. Nicholas is a 10th grader, and I think that's fantastic. Nicholas, as he gets up, if he's got a poison, he's going to do that dusting thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have uh, we have several under the windows that that, uh, that are here tonight, modeling the, uh, the the gifts that they received. If you all want to come forward, if you wish, please do so. Wearing your swag, why not? Oh, that's fine, that's fine. Oh, we are as gifts, okay, cool. All right, so we had uh, necklaces and there were some wristlets and there were hats. So, if you guys want to introduce yourselves, please do so. Tell us what we're doing. I'm Matt Meck. I'm 11th grader, Brockton High. 11th grade, and you love? I am Shamari Ford-DeBerry, and I'm a 10th grader at Brockton High. 10th grade? Okay, who do you love? I am Sydney Roller, I'm also a 10th grader at Brockton High. Excellent. Yeah, Phil. I'm Brandon Basa, I'm 10th grader at Brockton High. 10th grader, and you love? I'm Catherine Lewis, and I'm 11th grader at Brockton High. 11th. That's great. How about a round of applause for all these kids? Great stuff. Yeah, actually, you know what? Let's have a picture up here. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, God. Come on. Come on. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah, everybody come up. Yeah, yeah. My idea. We'll put Nicholas in the front. Right in the middle. In between. This, right, in, right in between. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. Look at this. All right, some of you guys kneel down. Come down. Some of you guys kneel down. All right, a few guys kneel down. A few guys kneel down. Just come with the guys. Let's have the guys kneel down. All right, put on. If you got your hats, put them on. You've got the bat. I right, make sure we can see the bat. And you don't have to do the Dustin Perdoy thing right now. Can you come in? Kneel down in the front so we get everybody. All right, guys. Hold on, Aldo. One more. Oh, is this Olivia? Come on in, Olivia. Come on, we'll put you right in front. You're the last one, so you get to go right in the right front. Right in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, that's great. Thanks. Okay, sure. folks. Why don't you guys sit down? I did. There's a couple more words I want to say. All right, guys, we're going to sit down? Wait, let's sit down. Sit down. I, sh I should have been an educator. In any event, um, I'd like to just mention about Dave and his dad, my friend Dave. When he was floundering as an undergraduate student, his dad sat him down and said to him, David, the more alphabet beside your name, the more, the more green you'll have in your bank account. And the less hard you'll have to work as you get older and the more you can do for society going forward. So remember that, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you know, here in Brockton, we're quick with accolades for academic achievement as well we should, and this, but this committee especially believes in promoting those same accolades for our scholars. So that's important to me. All right, hey, I'm gonna close. I didn't, I didn't tell the vice chair this, but I'm gonna do this anyways. I made a rhyme. Kids like to rhyme. All right, ready? I know, I know you are, I know you are. Box of Braun didn't see the dawn of a big three championship year. But the hardworking Box of Brain will always gain and attain each and every year. Go Boxers. We um, are all, always proud of our students, especially when we have them come up and display for us their, um, their smarts with figuring out Mr. Healy's, um, I would say, formula, um, scientific formula. But tonight, if you would like to stay, you're welcome to. But if you'd like to go home and do your homework, you're welcome to leave <laughs> now, too. So whatever you kids would like to do at this time, feel free. You can either leave or stay. Well, I'm, I'm going to basically turn it over to you and then you pull it off. Okay. Okay. agenda is the report of the superintendent of schools. Madam Superintendent. Yes, I'd like to start the evening with uh, our report uh, from our Brockton High School student representative, Jessica Freeborn. And Jessica, you're off to, is it jazz tonight afterwards? Yes. Jazz band. So she's a very busy young lady. Okay, so um, last week on Wednesday, October 30th, Brockton High hosted Halloween Hallway in our first four core hallways. And what it is, is pretty much it's hosted by several clubs at Brockton High. We all like get together and we plan within our clubs for a couple weeks to decorate the core hallways for Halloween. And um, students like in the elementary range um, from Brockton get to come and they get to trick or treat through the hallways. And there were two hallways set up. It was like the candy fun hallway and then the scary hallway. And those are the two different hallways we had open. And the students at Brockton High got to um, hand out candy or we had a um, reading going on for Halloween favorites for the kids. And we also had um, crafts painting pumpkins and we had a bake sale set up by the students as well. And that 
that was definitely a hit this year because we had um, almost a thousand people in attendance. So it was great and the kids really enjoyed it. So it was something we all got to give back to the community at Brockton High. So I was, it was a lot of fun. I was there and student council and boxer buddies and just a lot of different clubs. So that was really fun. And then as well um, at BHS we have college fairs and representatives um, from several different colleges visiting our school weekly to give um, students, um, usually juniors, <coughs> seniors, but for all um, grades, like the opportunity to start really focusing on the future and just like learning about and considering all the options there really is out there. So that's happening. Um, as well, MCAS Help After School for Students um, has started up. Um, it's preparing for the MCAS. Um, it's I want to say weekly, but I'm not completely sure. Um, and that's started up, so that's good with MCAS coming up for sophomores and retakes have already started, so that's happening. And um, coming up on Friday, we have the Veterans Day Assembly, which is um, consisting of the advanced concert band. We're performing um, some songs. Presentations are being made, and JRTC, um, JORTC members will be there. Um, and the assembly is for um, honoring and paying our respects to um, those who have served our country because as we know Monday is Veterans Day which is also the parade in Brockton where JRTC will be there and the marching band will be there so that's what's happening on Friday so yeah any questions? Jessica, thank you so much. Uh, very you. informative. On, I will tell you, the night of your Halloween hallway was the last night of my listening tour uh, at West Middle School. And parents had been there and were saying what a great event it was for the community, for their children. Uh, I want to publicly thank Diane Davis. I see her in the audience. Uh, the Boxer Buddies. We had, we had gotten uh, a note, an email saying, you know, we would like people to donate candy. So I right away started to ask about the donation. And Diane made a suggestion that maybe the superintendent should give pencils with a poem attached for the kids in the district. Uh, the Boxer Buddies helped me out with that. Um, it's so great to see the inclusiveness of our students at the high school, uh, Boxer Buddies, uh, everybody's involved for a wonderful event. Uh, that was great. So thank you, and thank you for bringing the Veterans Day uh, celebration to our attention. And uh, it, it's, it's certainly worthy to honor our veterans as you do each year. For me. Just very briefly, that was a wonderful presentation and it occurred to me that anybody watching this on television, any parents, uh, you just got what your kid probably shoved way down in the bottom of his or her backpack and didn't know anything about. So thank you. You just you, We just summarized a, a bunch of really good information that comes probably every day from the high school to you, to you uh, via backpack and never really gets there. So. Thanks, Jess. Next item, Madam Superintendent. I, I'd like to take out of order. Uh, we have the district review presentation, and those of you who heard me speak at the last school committee meeting, uh, we were lucky enough to be chosen by our Department of Elementary and Secondary Education to go through a process very seriously called a district review. The district review will be happening in our district uh, November 18th through the 20th. Uh, we have uh, Mr. John Roper here this evening. He is the district review coordinator for the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. We have had a meeting, I believe it was a week ago, a pre-review to prepare our district to make sure that it is productive for the time that uh, our partners are in the district. And uh, Mr. Roper is going to be presenting to you tonight so you can hear uh, what will be happening during those four days. So welcome to Brockton. Thank you so much. And uh, Ladies and gentlemen of the school committee, thank you all very much for inviting me down. Um, I'd like to explain to you a little bit about what the district review process is all about um, and kind of give you an idea of what we're able to do and what we're not able to do. Um, first of all, the district review is actually going to happen here in Brockton. Um, Um, a very short time, actually. Let's see here. <laughs> okay. Well, all right. Um, the district review is an opportunity for the department to come in and see if we can provide some assistance 
Um, now you've been working with people from the department for a little while now to uh, provide assistance. We're kind of the, the data arm of the department to be able to help them to do that for you. Um, first of all, we will be um, hoping to tell the story of the Brockton Public Schools. I've spent many years in education myself. Um, I remember for many years, I see the buses pick up the youngsters in the morning, drop them off in school, um, return them home in the afternoon, and, and mom and dad say, how did everything go today? And the answer is, mm, okay. Everything was good, we were fine, so, and that's all the information you get. Uh, we all know that there are a number of things that happen and every, every decision that gets made in this room, um, in the, the administrative offices, in the classrooms, have an impact on student achievement. And that's what we're here to help you um, to tell folks about. So, um, the situation is we will send in a group of six people. The six people that we're sending are all experts in school management. They're people who have served um, long successful careers as superintendents, as um, principals, as curriculum coordinators, uh, student support coordinators. Um, they're folks who understand what good practice is in public school system. They'll be coming here. They're going to um, look at the city of Brockton and the Brockton Public Schools together. Um, and they're going to use an organizing structure. They're going to look at six different areas. The uh, six areas are leadership and governance, curriculum and instruction, I'm not sure my PowerPoint's going to be working much tonight. <laughs> However, I think I'll just dispense with that. Um, so curriculum and instruction, um, leadership and governance, student assessment, um, human resources. Thank you. Human resources and professional development. Um, student support, and finance and asset management. The district review will take place in um, five basic stages. The first stage takes place before the team ever arrives in Brockton. For two days, these folks will sit down in, in Malden and they will go over all of the data, all of the information, everything that we know about the city of Brockton and the Brockton Public Schools. Um, and they will become almost experts in the numbers. But we know that numbers don't tell everything. Nobody wants to have the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education making decisions based on numbers alone. So what we'll be doing is we'll be coming to Brockton to do some interviews to ask the people who know what's happening what's going on what the numbers mean so the document analysis is a two-day process the six folks will sit down together they'll look they will look um, collectively at all of the data all of the information um, they will begin to refine questions that will drive the interviews that happen when the team comes on site. The second part is the part that uh, folks will see most clearly here in Brockton. That's the on-site visit. And it's a four-day period during which um, the team comes in, meets with folks here in, this, in the district, um, and begins gathering information. It starts with an introductory meeting, during which the people on the team will listen as much as they talk. We would like to know what you want the team to look at, what kinds of things you would like us to focus on. So the team will sit down, introduce themselves, meet your people, um, 
and then they'll begin to conduct a group of interviews. Most of the interviews will be with district administrators, but we'll also ask the school committee, um, invite the school committee to meet with the team and answer some questions. Um, the questions are very general, and what we're looking for is um, an opportunity to kind of explore the, the committee's um, relationship and um, its idea of what constitutes leadership and governance. Um, we'll look at, we'll ask for interviews with school and district program leaders. Um, we'll have a couple of interviews with teachers association. We will um, invite parents to join us for interviews and we'll have a school student interview at the high school. Um, we'd like to invite young people to uh, talk a little bit about how they see their school and how they find the Brockton Public Schools uh, particularly as, as far as their the challenging level of the courses, um, possibly the student support programs. Um, we'll also look for um, an interview with municipal officials. And, um, we'll see if we can uh, kind of gauge a little exploration about uh, the relationship between the district and the community. Um, we'll do some classroom observations and we'll probably get into most of your buildings. Principals will know when we're coming. Um, everybody will have identification so that um, you'll know who's going to be in your building in advance. Um, they'll come in and we'll go in groups, but we'll look at generally math, science, um, ELA, some special ed classes. Um, we'll be looking to see what kinds of things are going on in the classroom. And generally there are about you know, 30 to 50 classrooms that we visit over the course of time. Um, one of the things we're going to be doing um, is making sure that the information that we see in the documents um, is the same information that's driving instruction here in Brockton. We think it is, but we want to make sure. And we're also going to provide for you a separate set of eyes from outsiders, from folks who um, don't have quite the experience level that your administrators do. So um, it's nice to know that the same things that they're seeing here in the building are also the th things that uh, a group of, of independent um, examiners see when they come in to visit. So. Um, the information that we're going to gain uh, comes from a number of sources. It will come from interviews, it will come from documents, it will come from publications, it will come from practices and observations, and it will happen at not only the um, school level, not only the district level, but also at uh, the document and data level. So um, we'll be looking for all those different sources of information. And our intention here is to make sure that nothing goes into the report that's not triangulated. The um, triangulation of data is very important to us because an inaccurate report helps no one. So what we're looking to do is making sure that everything that we find out about um, is exactly accurate. We'll also make sure that it's accurate by um, providing the superintendent with a draft of the findings um, for factual correction, just to make sure that we haven't missed anything or misidentified anything or anyone. Um, and by the time we're done, we think that we will have about as accurate a picture of the Brockton Public Schools as we possibly can before we leave. We'll meet with the, the uh, district administrative team on that day and we'll give them an idea of what kinds of things the department is exploring, the team is exploring. But it's not done yet. 
following our four-day visit. We'll be back in Malden again. We'll go over all of that data and we'll develop a set of findings and recommendations. The findings will be somewhere between two and 18, um, well, two and three indicators, um, uh, findings per district standard. So it could be 18, possibly 20 um, bulleted facts that the team has, has found. And they won't be just negative things. We'll celebrate some of the good things that we'll find here in Brockton. And we know there are some already. So um, we'll look at all of those things. We'll give you an idea of what kinds of things there are. And they're developed by consensus. Um, the team members sit down in, in Malden and they will go over their findings, each and every one, and everyone has to be convinced that they've heard enough information to be able to say these things. So um, kind of protects everyone against inaccurate information um, by people who just don't know, uh, and nobody has to know everything. So. Um, it's a process that keeps going over and over. We call it iterative, iterative because we keep asking questions um, and hoping to get the same answers. Um, but the idea is to make sure that we are absolutely clear on what's going on. The draft refinement part of the review takes a little bit longer, and that can take up to three months, although sometimes we get the reports back in a few weeks. It depends kind of on what's in the report. Um, we also offer, as uh, uh, voluntary extra services, if you will, um, the uh, Associate Commissioner for Accountability will come back when the report is complete and report to the school committee about what we've found. Not just about this is what the report says, but she'll kind of meter it for you um, so that you will have an understanding of when, when our team says, this was really pretty good here in Brockton, where that kind of falls. Because pretty good may be really good in terms of other districts of a similar kind. So um, we'll try, we'll offer that to you if you'd like to do that. We'll also offer um, something that we call the next steps meeting. And that's again, um, strictly voluntary. Uh, we come back um, after the review, after the re report is ready to be published, and we'll sit down with the district leadership team and we'll go over the report. We'll talk about what kinds of uh, steps might wish to be, might be pursued here in Brockton. And again, as, as, uh, um, as I've said earlier, our findings and recommendations are strictly recommendations for you. So it's not something that the department is requiring to be done. Um, at our um, final meeting on site, we'll have we'll invite with us uh, the um, um, person from the department who is most responsible for providing assistance uh, for the Brockton Public Schools, Dr. Eve Bassett, and she'll be with us. Uh, to kind of hand off accountability right into assistance. We feel like we're the eyes and ears of the department here. We're trying to provide people with a good starting point for how to better help Brockton uh, do what Brockton has been trying to do so well for so long, and that's improve the way youngsters learn here in, here in the city. So um, at that point, I think we'll, we'll be taking our, our leave from you and, and um, we'll kind of watch and, and hope things go, uh, go well for you. Um, but that's really the end of the accountability arm and from then on it's, it's uh, the department's assistance group that will uh, help provide whatever needs to be done. So um, that's basically an outline of what we're going to be doing during the district review process. Uh, if anyone has any questions, I'll be happy to respond to them. Is this something that's done every single year or every other year? Or? Uh, not so much. Um, the law that began the accountability process requires us to do, well, it, it intended us to do 40 of these a year. 
Uh, we've never been funded for more than 20, but um, of the 40, it's supposed to be half in lower performing districts, and then the other half are supposed to be divided equally between districts which are um, better performing and districts which are selected at random. So we expect that at some point, every district will receive a district accountability visit. Um, obviously, the, the districts that are seeing the most challenges as far as student achievement goes are more likely to be selected, but it, it, it's going to be something that happens to everybody at, given enough time. Um, did that? You uh, said Thank you. We promise to leave you alone for the next three years. For your presentation, I do have some questions. Um, is is this type of um, review required by the DESC? Is it the DESC that is actually overseeing this and and managing it and running it? As a matter of fact, one of the things, my job as a department employee is to make sure that you get the best possible team. Um, I train the folks. Selected? Pardon me? Is the same team, is it the same team that does all of the districts or are there several teams involved? There are about 48 people who do accountability reviews mm -hmm. um, and they do them in other states, they do them for other countries. Um, the, the person who's chairing this team um, will be taking um, three months sabbatical from us to go to Dubai and do this kind of work over there. It's, it's a, there are certain groups of people who go into consulting because they're, well, they've gotten tired of going to night meetings. Um, I'm sure that doesn't ring familiar with anyone here, but um, uh, there are people who have uh, um, spent a, a lot of time doing this kind of thing and they, they go into consulting now. Um, I train the people to make sure that they're up to date on all of the department initiatives and there have been a number of them over the last few years. Um, and we make sure that the group does what we say they're supposed to do. I will be here for part of the review um, to make sure that the folks that, um, that we send are um, not only expert but also uh, representing the department well. So do we have a team that is assigned to us at this point? Yes, you do, um, okay. and can you also have the opportunity to challenge anyone on the team. Can um, we get a week a ago, Friday, I think it was, we shared the biographies of the team members with the superintendent and the leadership team. So, uh, at some point, if she wishes, she could. Uh, yeah, share could you that please share that with us? I'd like to and their expertise. Um, what you know with this this strength on why they're on the committee we I even provide really pictures um, sometimes names change it's and uh, pictures <laughs> I don't care about okay and uh, so what is the ultimate goal or outcome or result of of this full review our outcome is to help support the district initiatives um, you folks have been doing a lot of things to help improve education in Brockton. Um, we're going to come in, we're going to look at them, we're going to celebrate the ones that are really effective, we're going to encourage you to keep up the good work and ones that you may not have seen results with yet, but which the team identifies as really good ideas and will offer you some thoughts um, about things that you've reached, you've identified as challenges. You will. It will surprise me if anything in this report surprises you. It will be likely to be things that you already know about, um, and hopefully it will be some good ideas that, that you might want to consider trying. Well, our high school is going through the accreditation process right now. Does this dovetail at all with that? Or it's is completely separate from that. It I know is you're completely in separate. The high school a little bit. So, is there any sharing of information? Is, is there any part of we the will look at their that report. will be involved in that? We will look at their report. Mm -hmm. The difference between them, first of all, is that um, um, for the district accreditation, the high school accreditation, you are paying for that. Um, for this review, which will encompass the entire district and not just the high school, uh, the Commonwealth is paying for. So mm -hmm. this is not something that's going to cost you any money. Um, it's also something that will be a little bit more encompassing than the high school um, 
the accreditation process. And it's based on <coughs> district standards and indicators um, and the conditions of school effectiveness more than a self-study. So it's uh, done third party based on data, based on information, and not based on um, um, narrative uh, discussion within the, the school buildings. Have you started any of the data collection or data analysis yet? Prior to yes, the and tomorrow when I get back, that? I will be sending the uh, superintendent um, a data pack. It's about yay thick of all of the information that our team will be using to uh, uh, get an idea of where things are in Brockton. It's strictly numbers. It's it's all stuff that, that uh, um, you'll be familiar with. You'll be you'll have seen it in a number of different presentations, I'm sure, over the course of the year. There'll be things like the DART, um, which is a, a, a spreadsheet that compares your district with other similar districts. There will be profile data from the department website. There'll be um, um, information from the Secretary of State's office, the Department of Revenue. Anything that you have sent us, we collect uh, and make sure that our team has read it. So, uh, you have some dates here on the presentation that I know you had um, difficulty with. Uh, November 18th to the 21st, is That's that correct. the site visit? That's the site visit. Okay, so that is less than two weeks away. So where are you in the process of organizing all of these people that you want to interview? How is that? How are people being um, informed about that, invited to that? Um, with it being less than two weeks away, we're getting to crunch time, I would imagine. I haven't heard anything as a school committee member, so I'm trying to set my calendar, and I'm sure parents want to set their calendars, and, and everyone that you want to interview. So how is that going to be done in a timely fashion at this point? Can I speak to that, please? Mm -hmm. uh, we met yesterday. Uh, Dr. Cancel is heading up this process you know, for us uh, to work with the department to prepare. We met yesterday in our executive team. Uh, we had our sheets, and we started to plug in all of the people that needed to you know needed to be part of the process so you will be I think as we speak they're getting together the letters that are going out to everybody inviting them school committee members uh, students up at the high school uh, school council members this time of course to sit with you know the superintendent the deputy superintendent so all of that it probably was I want to say three pages long and we worked on it for about two hours yesterday mm -hmm. so we'll have that to you uh, we certainly can have it Friday in your informational packet and how are those people being selected and who are sele who's selecting those people? Uh, we actually sat and you know tried to have representation from all over the district uh, when we uh, worked with the school committee uh, you know, we looked at people's schedules and we'll certainly give everybody an opportunity. Uh, we'll let you know the time so that the school committee can certainly all be included. Um, when we talked about parents, we were trying to think of parents, again, that, that are involved in the schools and will be able to have information to share with the department. So we sat and, as I said, worked on that yesterday for probably about two hours. So when can people expect to receive their invitations, I suppose, for lack of a better word? Monday. I was going to say, I know they're working on it now as we speak. Will they have it out by Monday? Uh, Monday's Veterans Day. Yeah, I, I would mail me uh, over deliver on this one. Um, I'm hoping, after talking to Ethan this, this, this evening, uh, that we should be able to have all of this ready to be mailed by Monday, which doesn't, just because it's a holiday doesn't mean that we won't be working with it. And that it, you know, I would think that people, local people in the city, we get into the rock and the postal service, they'll get it by Tuesday or Wednesday. But you have to remember that their invitations will go out at that time, but there doesn't mean that they're going to be meeting with people on the 18th and 19th. It could be towards the end of the week. Because when you, you get the schedule, when you actually look at it, uh, the, the names and departments are penciled in we're more of the outside, uh, inside people. We're actually, you know, common hands, teachers in the system. So the invitees will be more towards the end of the week, so that they'll get at least a full week of notification. Will any of these uh, meetings be held after work hours? Yes. To accommodate people's work schedules? That's exactly what we did. Are you giving them opportunities to select a time that's convenient for them? 
we were pretty much tied in with times when the committee was available. So they gave us times uh, with ranges of time. However, the team is extremely flexible. Um, in Randolph, I remember four different school committee interviews, um, and we will make an make an concerted effort to um, meet with anyone who wishes to talk to the team. No one has to, but if you wish to, we will be there for you. Okay, seems like it's very little time, very little notice for people, and people have very busy lives. They I understand. work. Yeah. They have, um, and most of the people that you're inviting, they're involved in many other things. So it's yeah, these people have less than a week's notice about these um, visits and interviews. I have to say that we deliberately um, scheduled Brockton early in the district review season because you have a new superintendent. Um, and we thought that getting the review to the Brockton Public Schools as soon as possible um, will help her um, in getting her feet on the ground and getting the best purchase uh, for her new uh, position here in Brockton. So we did do that and I apologize uh, for the, the fact that it does put a late notice on folks, but we're gonna try to accommodate that by meeting with you at any time that you are available. Mm -hmm. So um, okay. I do apologize apologize, but there was sort of a method in our madness in trying to do this early. And, and that being said, the one thing that I will tell you, and I mentioned at the last meeting, we're finishing up our transition team. I've done listening tours all over the district. We're looking forward after the district review to start to pull all of this information together after the first of the year to start to talk about you know, entry planning and transition planning. So I've asked that this report get here as soon as possible so that we can make use of it. And it will be prioritized by the department. This is one of those that we're moving right up to the top of the list um, because you do have a new superintendent um, and we do think that this will be helpful to her. So, and to you, but it starts with her. <laughs> you mentioned that um, you will be sharing your findings, your recommendations with us, and they are strictly recommendations. Yes. So we could ultimately reject all of the findings. Absolutely. We could embrace all of the findings. So it's, our, it's our choice. So as a district, we can decide how we want to utilize the findings. Uh, does the Department of Education utilize the findings in any way at a, a state level? No. Once, well, okay. The department itself does not, but working in conjunction with the Brockton Public Schools, the department will provide as much assistance as humanly possible. Humanly possible. So what would that translate to? It could translate into any number of things. Um, if there were something that desperately had to be done right now, the department does bring its checkbook occasionally. Um, and school improvement grants are available for certain kinds of things that have to be done. Generally speaking, we'll work with the district and we'll kind of try to identify um, priority areas mm -hmm. that may be working on now or that you may have planned for the future. So it's not something that, that the department is coming in and saying, we are going to hold you accountable for the following things. It's something that um, we're providing as a service that we believe is helpful and that will be helpful to the folks who are at the department um, identifying sources of assistance for Brockton. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate your, your information and in, in answering all of my questions. I, and you know, we're very much looking forward to coming and, and uh, sitting down and having an opportunity to chat with you for an evening. And just to reiterate, if you could please provide the information on all of the, um, the team members in our Friday packet, as well as the um, site visit schedules, so we can clear our schedules and make ourselves available. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Okay. Uh, I want to give you uh, an update on the educator uh, evaluation. Uh, 
One thing that uh, I have done uh, in collaboration with uh, Dr. Moran and Kim Gibson from the BEA is we have provided a timeline uh, which we will also include uh, in your packet this week to show you just where we're at in the district. Um, what is going to be happening in the next couple of weeks, you will see statewide, there will be information that will be presented throughout the state uh, about uh, educator evaluations that are happening, findings, uh, percentages of teachers that are found to be proficient, exemplary, needs improvement. Um, what we're doing in the district and we're pleased is, you all are aware that we bargained and finished the bargaining up last February, very late February. We were able to uh, get training done for district teams, school teams in late August, three days of training. Uh, it was a train the trainer model where they went back to the schools in early September into October, setting the stage for the ed evaluation process to take place in Brockton this year. And when I say take place in Brockton, I'm talking 100%. That means from the superintendent uh, down to the executive team, to our district administrators, to teachers in the classroom, 100% of our staff will be evaluated this year and you will be able to see the results that we enter into the EPUMS portal next June. Uh, that being said, our teachers right now are doing their self-assessment, they're preparing their goals, uh, we're talking about continued professional development. We had an opportunity last week to visit a district that has already adoptive, adopted one of the ed eval tools. We're starting to look at that, uh, we're looking at districts that have created their own tools, so we very much are are on our way to uh, having this our pilot year be a success. Um, I'm going to be looking at for the district what I'm calling an accelerated plan to make sure that there is no stone unturned when we're finished this year. It will have been just that, a pilot year. I feel very strongly when you talk about at Aval, um, one of the things that we want it to be is a very positive experience for our educators. It should be a growth model. It should show, again, from our newest educators to our veteran educators, you know, that you have quality educators in the city of Brockton. So we are looking forward to, to having those results for you at the end of this school year. Next item, trauma-sensitive schools. Mr. Haley? Possible package just to put a quick synopsis of how the Ed Aval is going forward. You know, I know you're doing the self-assessment and so forth. What's the next step and the next step down sure. the road? We can put some information in. I can put the timeline in so you can see, again, what we've done at this point. Um, I can continue to provide some documents for you. One of the things, actually, you heard me talk about this in August. So the process that the teachers are going through, I need to go through as a superintendent. I think we were waiting for our new school committee to be seated, uh, which will happen very soon. Uh, I actually just left the conference down the Cape with the school superintendents and the school committees they're very much talking about all of this so I look forward to setting up uh, training for our new school committee men our veteran school committee uh, men and we will go forward and and I will be uh, the first one that you're able to evaluate with this process I would love to see us adopt a tool where I could also work with you and, and especially a superintendent so you're able to evaluate the superintendent after every school committee meeting you know different initiatives that are happening in the district the district review process. So again, it's something that, rather than something that happens at the end of the time, it's a, a continual process that, that I would like to go through with all of you, and it'll be a pilot for all of us. So I'm looking forward to modeling that for the district with our school committee. I just think it's important that we need to recognize and know the, uh, the amount of effort and extra work that it takes uh, to go through this process because really we've kind of been left out of that understandably so because you guys are just learning it yourself so uh, what as soon as you can bring us into the fold that'd be great you know, I think that's a good point, Mr. Healy, is we are learning it ourselves. Uh, we, we're talking continuously about it. I meet with Kim Gibson once a week. Uh, Dr. Moran meets with us. You know, we, we, we're talking about, you know, there are some concerns. There are some clarifications. We're talking about doing something on the website such as
such as a frequently asked questions, uh, a newsletter, bringing our staff back again to continue to provide support. So the message is out there, and, and it needs to be a culture. You know, it can't be a culture that we're worried about the evaluation. We need to support it so that it brings teachers to the next level. That's my goal I talked about the very first day with every teacher in front of me. That's my feeling continuing forward, uh, that this will support our staff, all of our staff. Yeah, well, the more knowledge we all have about it, the more easily that task will be attained, certainly. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Next slide. And the next item is the trauma-sensitive schools. And this is something that has been in the district a number of years. We have a very special event going on. I believe it's Thursday, November 14th. And Dr. Sal Tarasi, who's been part of this project from, from day one, will, will share with us what's happening. Thank you very much. Um, Brockton Public Schools has been involved in, a, in, a, in an effort uh, called Helping Traumatized Children Learn since about 2007. Uh, and we have partnered with an organization called uh, the Trauma and Learning Policy Initiative, which is an organization which is a, a partnership between Mass Advocates for Children and the Harvard Law School. Uh, and they have, uh, our, our work over the years has involved um, trying to obtain some grants for our, for our schools and uh, to get our teachers trained in becoming a little bit more uh, sensitive to the kinds of issues uh, that that children affected by trauma uh, bring into the classroom. And, and trauma is, is something that's kind of broadly defined as uh, you know, sort of episodic trauma, trauma or uh, basic trauma when, you know, children are affected by some sort of natural disaster. But it's also uh, a, a lot more involved than that. There's a thing called complex trauma, which is a kind of dep deprivation that, uh, you know, children suffer uh, when, when people in their family are sick over long periods of time with a, a physical sickness, a, a, a mental illness, death in the family, uh, chronic deprivation, uh, um, sort of financial kinds of hardships, um, substance abuse, all kinds of things that uh, affect children's uh, social and emotional well-being. And, and we've done a lot of work in training our, our, our staff in recognizing what the, in coming to understand the, the, the causes of trauma, and then in recognizing how that can manifest itself behaviorally in the classroom, and then giving our teachers a set of strategies to deal with that. Um, to basically to certainly promote academic achievement, but beyond that, to develop children as as whole uh, people uh, and to attend to their well-being, generally speaking. Uh, along along the way, we uh, we struck up a relationship with Leslie University, and Brockton Public Schools was very instrumental in actually helping Leslie University to develop graduate level courses that focused on um, trauma and its relationship to uh, teaching and learning. We helped them develop the courses, and then uh, they began offering those courses. We sought foundation money um, for, to, to offset the cost of, of some of those courses. And to date, we have uh, trained over 200 of our teachers uh, with graduate level courses. Um, offered uh, via Leslie University. Uh, we now have developed uh, a third course, which uh, we're trying to get uh, to culminate in a certificate, sort of a, uh, uh, an educator certificate, and um, we're working on that. Um, so th the long and short of it is that this is an initiative that has been ongoing in the Brockton Public Schools for quite some time. And because the Trauma and Learning Policy Initiative has recognized that the Brockton Public Schools has been somewhat of a leader in this across the state, they have asked us if they could have the, the release of their book uh, announced and, and the media event accompanying that, if that could occur at one of our schools, and uh, we've actually planned for that to occur on November 14th uh, at, 
at the Baker School. The Baker School happens to be one of our schools which is, has been designated as a trauma sensitive school. Uh, the principal has um, taken an active role, uh, a leadership role in, in that regard, has trained staff. And so you all should have received uh, an invitation to it, uh, for that event. We've invited, uh, you know, uh, a school committee people, our legislative delegation. There will be people coming be coming from uh, Boston and other school districts across the state that have been invited by either Harvard Law School or the Trauma and Learning Policy Initiative. And uh, the book uh, that they have uh, written is, is you, you have a copy of the cover and the table of contents. The book it will be out by then. You, you'll ultimately receive a copy of the book, but right now you have the cover and the table of contents. And it's called Helping Traumatized Children Learn. It's volume two. That will be re that will be released uh, along with a website that we will preview that night, and so uh, we'd like to you know make sure that this is on your radar screen. Uh, invite you to this event, uh, and also announce that the Secretary of Education will be uh, one of the uh, primary speakers at this uh, at this event, and uh, uh, his office has been in contact with the uh, Trauma Learning Policy Initiative. They are briefing him uh, on uh, you know certain aspects of the project, but uh, quite frankly, he was here for some of that, and, um, and, and is pretty pretty well acquainted with with the initiative. So uh, he will be a good person to to comment on that uh, w with some degree of no personal knowledge. Uh, so we're hoping to see you all there, and uh, it's it's just another way that uh, Brockton has made its mark uh, statewide. Speak, but um, wonder if we could extend or ask to extend that invitation to um, um, perhaps a member of the district attorney's office that deals with the uh, juvenile delinquency, uh, if it's not already on that it's list. It's already, and, district attorney's office yeah. is already there. And um, CPCS, the Commonwealth Public Council Services on the other side the, that represent the children. Uh, that sometimes if, if <coughs> behavior issues that could be, uh, you know, grow out of a traumatic situation, find their way to the courts, then I think it, it would be helpful to have um, the judicial perspective too. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely try to do that. Okay, if, if, if you'd like, I can reach out to yeah, uh, CPCS and, and ask if they care to send a member. Yeah, please feel free to do that. All right. We'd we'll be happy to have them. Thanks, Al. Okay. I um, actually had the opportunity to attend uh, the training at the Baker last spring, and it was it was great. It was a Saturday all-day event. Um, I think it used volume one of the curriculum. Uh, I was able to take it home and really spend some time with it. Um, uh, you can plan on me being there, and, and certainly I think this is an amazing thing that Brockton is doing. I think it's something that every, should, every community in, in the country should be participating in, quite honestly. Um, and I just, you, you kind of talked a little bit about the definition of trauma, and, and I think oftentimes when we think about trauma, we think about something really bad happening, uh, violence in the home, severe substance abuse issues, a death in the family. Trauma could be as simple, and, and, and in fact, one of the situations that they talked about and described at the training was a kid who just saw a late night news story. Right. And, and just young people, especially our youngest and most vulnerable students, they haven't developed coping mechanisms yet to deal with you know, the death of a pet or, or uh, a conversation that they misunderstand that their parents have at the dinner table or, or, or something they hear on the school bus on the way home. Um, and, and so you're talking about the most severe types of trauma and you're talking about kind of in some cases simple traumas that, that kids come to school with that can be resolved before they even leave the school that day. If we have teachers and, and, and classroom instructors and in schools who are bought into recognizing and understanding the trauma and, and addressing it, oftentimes they can alleviate kind of the, some of the behavioral issues that manifest that day, make parents aware of it and, and allow it to be addressed and, and help kids move on from it very quickly. And in some cases it's about finding resources to support a family or, or a student long term deal with significant trauma issues. And so I just, you know, especially for the folks at home, I think 
men, most of our kids experience something various levels of trauma. Right. Um, most of them don't experience really severe trauma, but almost all of them experience some kind of trauma. Some, some degree. You're, you're absolutely right. I couldn't agree more. I mean, there have been several government, I mean, studies that have been sponsored by a federal government, which indicate that in the course of a student's school age career, you know, K to 12, that at least 20% of students, so that's one in five students, at some point in their career um, have a diagnosable uh, condition, uh, emotional condition. And that could be due, due to the death of a family member or a hospitalization or something like that. And it's a temporary sh sort of short-lived thing, but yet it's real. And that, that's one in five, and that's a diagnosable condition. That doesn't even take into account the, the, the l much greater percentage of students that never reach that po point of being diagnosable, but s still have some level of trauma that is in some way affecting their school performance and their development uh, as a person. So yeah. it's, it's a real issue. Yeah, and so you're talking about a program that doesn't just serve a very small population of our students. It's really, when implemented correctly, right. a, a population that has the potential to serve almost every one of our students and, at, and, at some point in, in time or in some way. It, um, but by the way, I'd like to add that when, when you say, and it's something that every school district should be doing, you know, please know that there has been ongoing legislation uh, you know, at the state level, and uh, several of us in Brockton have been asked on a couple of occasions to provide testimony. Uh, and, and we have, uh, and it comes under the, uh, what, we're, what we're calling trauma-sensitive schools is tr being translated into legislation as safe and supportive school environments. Yeah, and I, I think that's kind of one of those things that maybe helps people understand it better is a context like that. Um, but also in relation to the PBIS, the positive behavioral interventions that we're implementing, they, they partner and marry so well and I think support each other, which is which is a great thing too. Absolutely. So I, I just think this is an amazing thing and it, uh, certainly anything I can do to continue to support and help this. Well, I, I, um, we really thank you for your support in um, all this. Please, let me know. Thanks, Sal. It was a great presentation. I'm looking forward to uh, going to the Baker on the 14th. Um, you mentioned that the Baker School is designated as a trauma-sensitive school, or I actually like the other, the other safe phrase and of safe and supportive schools, which I think all of our schools should ideally have that designation. But at this point, how many of our schools have the comprehensive training that, right. that gives them that designation? Our, our schools are at various levels of development. Mm -hmm. we, 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 you know, there is no official designation as a trauma-sensitive school, but for example, the principal of the Baker, and formerly when he was at the Angelo, he made it a point to train all of his staff in this. Now, there are other schools that are at, at levels where some of their staff have taken courses because they have been interested in it, but it it hasn't necessarily permeated the entire staff. Mm -hmm. What we're trying to do, as I uh, alluded to earlier, we're trying to work to a point where we could actually get some sort of a, a certification certificate that would designate a school uh, in which maybe, say, 80 or 85 percent of the staff have reached a certain level, a certain criterion of training to be designated officially as a trauma-sensitive school. And uh, we're trying to partner with the university to do that. We haven't gotten there yet, but um, we're really working very closely toward that. So by obtaining that goal, how do you see that that particular school helping our district value that designation? Well, one of the things that happens is that um, there is a, as part of the IST process, there's the student planning process, mm -hmm. there is a way of looking at children through sort of a domains-based lens. And when, when schools implement that domains-based planning process, they sort of take into account all of the various aspects that are, um, you know, encompassed in the book in, in developing an approach to to, uh, to working with a given child or, or family. And, um, you know, we're, we're, we're making good strides toward mm -hmm. that end. Uh, and, and as Mr. Robinson said, you know, whether it's um, uh, helping traumatized children learn, PBIS, uh, collaborative problem solving, all of these things actually work together in, in a nice way. And uh, so we, we, we're making good progress, but, you know, we're not there yet, and neither is anybody else in the state. Right. But uh, okay. we, at, at least we've made the commitment uh, to move in that direction. And, and, I, and I certainly do applaud that. I know you've been working on this for several years, oh, yeah. and it's really great, the progress that you've made. And not only 
helping our district, but other districts by working with the universities and right. and you know help and creating these these co these graduate courses. I, I can tell you that my office specifically has been contacted by the Reading Public Schools, the Plymouth Public Schools, and Cambridge because they're looking to emulate what has happened in Brockton. So is it safe to say that the ultimate goal is for all of our schools to ultimately be safe and supportive schools? Yeah, absolutely. And that's, and that's why we support the legislation, too. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you again, Sal. Just quickly, Tony, in response to your uh, I wrote a note. The training that I was at last year uh, that, that uh, Principal Powers put on, um, Nancy Liedberg and Ed Jake, Nancy Liedberg from the Brockton Police Department, Ed Jacobs from this uh, DA's office actually shared a piece of that training. Um, you know, doc, or, uh, Officer Liedberg talking about some of the specific things that we struggle with here in Brockton in terms of trauma in the home and, and things that our kids are exposed to in, in their neighborhoods. Uh, and, and Ed Jacobs obviously, you know, understanding it from the kind of court side perspective. And that I think about half the day was the two of them presenting kind of local, a local picture of what it looks like. Um, and, then, and then obviously the folks um, working through the curriculum with the teachers the, the second half of that day. So they're, they're very active, at least in my experience so far, right. um, with the implementation of this. And, and while my office has taken a great interest in that, of course, th this is all part of Mrs. Barry's plan for non-academic supports. So you know her office is working simultaneously on academic supports and non-academic supports for children. So this is really part of a, of a much larger plan for the Brockton Public Schools that comes out of teaching and learning. So, uh, just, excuse me? I called on you. Oh, thank you. Uh, I did. I did. I wanted to say a couple of things. Um, I do. I, uh, in addition, I, I just it occurred to me: Do we have um, anyone from the the Brockton pol the school police who uh, would it, would it be helpful to for them to attend? Well, Nancy Liedberg has been invited to that. Okay, so she. It'll be about 120 people total. Um, but Nancy is not school police, is she, or is she? Um, so I th uh, perhaps sure if I know. you know. Lieutenant Mills wanted to designate somebody. Perhaps it, w it wouldn't hurt. Uh, and I and I'd still reach out to the CPCS because it, I think the more people you have, we, we've had some pretty fascinating conversations about this. Um, but the last thing too is, of course, I think you know, for whatever it's worth, designating a school as trauma sensitive um, might not be a good idea. I think the goal, is, as Mrs. Joyce yeah. said, just making the district trauma sensitive because you don't want to identify a school. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> and send kids to that school and say, oh, they've experienced trauma and yeah. all that and other. We've even now began confidentiality began to take the issues. That trauma sensitive is a bit of a, it works, but it's a bit of a misnomer. We actually prefer the safe and supportive school yeah. nomenclature. Right. Which, that's, any school ought to be that. Yeah. Okay. Done. Can you believe it? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tarasi. Thanks a lot. Um, next items to refer to subcommittee. I know Mr. Carpenter, you wanted to say something? A request? <clears throat> there was uh, some discussion at a previous, our most recent finance subcommittee meeting on a, a pause creating a, a, a maintenance position uh, related to the cafeterias and being able to fund that out of our food service accounts. So uh, I know that Mrs. Joyce and a couple other members had some ongoing work requesting some additional information. This is kind of a crossover issue because this has also been a topic at facilities. Um, so it, it kind of intertwines both subcommittees. So uh, I, I would like to schedule a facilities subcommittee meeting to ask uh, Mr. Thomas and Mr. Petronio to be available to answer questions of school committee members. And um, what I'll do is I'll ask Wanda to reach out to the entire school committee and make sure we schedule that subcommittee meeting at a time that is agreeable to everyone on the committee so the full committee can be available to, to if, they, if they would like to attend and, and ask any specific questions. Um, so that's my request. Okay. Any other item? Anyone? Mr. Healy? And I'll work with Mr. Thomas Great. Mr. Healy? Uh, I would request that uh, the chair of our building naming committee uh, also ask that we uh, schedule a uh, subcommittee meeting because I am ready. I'm ready with what I put together. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, 
seeing as it's the same members, we could do it on the same night yeah, if that's okay with Mr. Yeah. Healy. Yeah. We could put that one earlier no, to, to be more, to make sure the other one's more available to everybody. Great. Very well, be happy okay. to do that. Anyone else? I just want to bring to your attention, uh, next Tuesday night, I will be out of the district, but you will have a presentation for the curriculum subcommittee uh, on the update. You had a presentation last year on from the Office of Teaching and Learning uh, on uh, PARC, on the Common Core, on the initiatives happening in the district. Um, I want to tell you how proud I was today at your conference for the school committee and the superintendents. You had both uh, Dr. Heather Ronan presenting uh, as a PARC fellow. She's one of, I think, 24 in the state. Uh, you also had uh, Elizabeth Barry presenting. Uh, Liz did an excellent job. I was really pleased to partner with her today. Uh, we presented uh, about the HR pilot project. We talked about organizational structures. We talked about professional development happening in the district. Uh, so we're very fortunate as a district to have uh, these people presenting statewide. Mrs. Joyce. I have just one question on the curriculum meeting. I have it in my calendar, but I don't have the location or final time. Have we finalized that yet? I thought it was 7 o'clock at the Arno. 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 Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Any unfinished business? Seeing no unfinished business, we move to new business. Um, the Finance sub Subcommittee of October 29th. Um, the Finance Subcommittee of the Brockton Public Schools held a meeting on Tuesday, October 29th, 2013 at the um, Little Theater at the Yarn Known at 7 p.m. <clears throat> at that time, the superintendent presented a proposed Brockton Public Schools uh, reorganizational chart that she, along with the executive team, drafted to effectively realign the departments in the district. Uh, the superintendent explained that when she came into her position, it was evident that realignment of some positions, along with filling some vacant positions, was necessary uh, for student achievement. Uh, there was also discussion about non-union salary ranges and the need for some expert advice with regard to salaries <coughs> and independent analysis to review and make recommendations to the district and the school committee about ranges so that uh, any decisions that would be made by us would be based based upon factual information. Uh, the committee then voted to move the proposed organizational chart forward to the full, full school committee for its ratification. Uh, can I have a motion to approve those minutes? To approve those minutes. Second, any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Very good. All right, and seeing that we've approved those minutes, we would then need a motion to adopt the proposed Brockton Public School reorganizational chart as presented and modified at our meeting. Mr. Healy, second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Um, anything that anyone would like to bring up at this time that we have not covered under other business? Mr. Donegan. Oh, I should probably just leave it to you, Mr. Vice Chair. I'll hold my thoughts. Um, one item that I wanted to discuss was last weekend over at um, the Mary Baker, there was a um, technology conference that was open and voluntary for all of our staff, our certified staff, our non-certified staff, and the cafeteria was full. I was, I went over um, just to basically say hello and express the gratitude on behalf of the school committee that people were taking advantage of getting up to speed on some of the tools that we have to offer here and some of the vendors were assisting and our staff internally, our technology staff was doing a great job of presenting and assisting. Um, it was very impressive to see a full cafeteria on a voluntary basis um, on a um, Saturday morning. So I'm very pleased with that and um, I just wanted to make sure they knew that we all appreciated that. Would you like to say something about it? Oh, uh, it's, I, I believe it's the second year uh, I attended uh, last year and this year. And as Mr. Minicello said, um, 
you know, it's very, very powerful to know what was happening Saturday with all of the offerings were going to then take place in those classrooms on Monday morning. So this is, again, one of those things that you're just very proud to come from the Brockton Public Schools when you know our technology department has been working for months on putting this together. I know there were people invited, actually people in other districts asking to be part of it, and we've certainly opened it up to them. You had a number uh, of vendors that were sponsoring the breakfast and the lunch, uh, and it, it was a great way uh, for teachers, again, to come together. And it wasn't just teachers, MTAs, paraprofessionals, people from all over the district you know, took the opportunity uh, to attend the technology conference, uh, and we'll make sure everybody is invited, everybody's invited to it. So again, thank you to our Katie Buckley, uh, Dan Vigent, and our whole technology department. Great. Um, I would also like to point out and welcome Ray Henningsen and Alicia Clark, who were elected uh, to the school committee and will be joining us in January. Also elected was Judy Sullivan, uh, who I spoke to today and will be coming to our next meeting. But um, congratulations to the two of you and welcome aboard. We um, look forward to working with you and all of us on the school committee, even those members that might be leaving are pretty generous and I'm sure would help in any way, shape or form if you were to reach out to any of us. So um, we'll make sure that you are treated right and um, we've already requested that materials be forwarded to you. I have some materials for you tonight after the meeting. I'd love to give them to you. Um, without further ado, I think I'd like to introduce our new mayor-elect of the city of Brockton, Mr. Bill Carpenter. Uh, it's going to be obviously uh, a new experience working with Bill as the chair. Um, I would like to say that um, our present mayor has done a superb job with all of us and certainly has supported the schools um, and has um, always been a champion of Brockton. So um, to Mayor Balzotti, we all express our respect and admiration too as well. So um, anyone else would like to add anything this evening? Mr. Healy. I hope I will be I have the opportunity to speak to uh, the mayor when he mayor elect when he becomes mayor with the same candor that I do now. <laughs> <laughs> Very well, thank you. Okay, well thank you all for attending. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. All in favor? Thank you for coming.